dialysis nurses supporting nurses and it is a great day to talk about dialysis and even a better day to talk about what to do when a patient passes out and it's the best day to like and subscribe. The intradialytic symptom of passing out is definitely what causes the most anxiety amongst dialysis staff. But the good news is whether it's them passing out, cramping, bellyache, nausea, vomiting, headache, it's all because of the same thing. And it's because we're removing too much fluid or we're removing too much fluid too fast. So what's the fix for that, you guys? Nailed it. We gotta get fluid back. By the end of this video, I will have answered your questions and eased your anxiety about what to do when your patient passes out. Oh my gosh, I am talking too much. Ramona is over here white as a ghost. Ramona, are you feeling okay? Are you sure? Yeah, you're looking a little pale. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm gonna lay you flat and I'll get you fixed real quick. So number one, I'm gonna lay her flat. You need to get that blood back to her brain. Number two, I'm going to ask for help. Sonia, I could use your help over here. Ramona's not feeling well. Bring some oxygen. So I've got Sonia coming over here to help me take care of the patient. They're going to manage the patient so I can manage the machine. And if I can not panic, this is me not panicking. I'm gonna put my gloves on and I'm going to stop removing fluid from Ramona. Minimum UFR. I'm also going to get a blood pressure. Ooh, I've got a blood pressure of 60 or 40. Ramona, you feeling any better? And Ramona's not responding. She's passed out. What's rule number one? Do not panic. We know what to do and we've got Sonia here to help. Pro tip number one of the video, we need to get that fluid back and we need to keep that pump going. When we open the saline, we're going to end up dropping this arterial pressure and that's going to stop the pump. So to keep the pump from stopping, you need to toggle the up and down arrows on the blood pump to open up those arrows. So I'm going to get the saline and I'm going to keep the pump going. If you forget to do that, don't worry about it. Just come back and get that pump going. See how much saline you're giving her. Ramona, how are you feeling? Would you look at that? Fixed her. We've got color back in her face. She's smiling. I've got a blood pressure of 101 over 60. I can stop giving her saline. And I will let Sonia finish up and I will call the doctor and let him know what happened. Before uh, I get you ready to call the doctor, there are a couple other pro tips I want you to be aware of. Be aware of your needle. The last thing you want to happen when you're laying them flat is that you accidentally pull their needles out because then you've got another problem. You've got to stop the bleeding and you still have to give them saline back. So watch those needles. Depending on the patient, you kind of have to use your critical thinking. When they start feeling like they're passing out, oftentimes they also get nauseous too. So it's, it's a really fine line between having them lay flat but also preventing them from aspirating. So depending on the patient, if you're able to lay them flat and have them lay on their side, give that a try. If you're not able to lay them on their side, get someone over there with an emesis bag, start giving them fluid to kind of help get their blood pressure back up. I would say whenever you are looking around the room and you see anybody with their feet down, you need to go to that patient. Majority of patients that I have seen pass out, it's they have their feet down and then all of a sudden they're looking great. So when people have their feet down, I have an eagle eye on them. I am over there, I am getting their blood pressure. I am talking to them about why they have their feet down. Are they cramping? I wanna fix their cramping. If their butt hurts, try to get them to lay back and get them repositioned on their side. Have Having their feet down is a high risk for passing out. The very first time somebody passed out on me, they were sitting and all of a sudden I looked back and they were gray and I panicked. Once they do wake up, they still might be feeling nauseous. They still might end up developing cramps. So be mindful of that. All right, let's go to our post LOC huddle. Welcome to post LOC huddle. Uh, when somebody passes out, this is not something to be embarrassed about. It is something to learn from. And that's what this huddle is for. After a patient passes out, you, you have to get prepared to call the provider and be prepared to answer questions regarding their fluid status. So have your S bar ready, have your dry weight, blood pressures, your goals, your crit lines, have all that information ready when you call the physician. Picking the right UFR is complicated. I remember when I first came off orientation, I had so much anxiety about picking the right 
goal. I was using all of my resources. I was asking my tech, I was talking to my patient, I was talking to the other seasoned nurse, like, hey, do you think that this patient will tolerate this? And when nobody knew the answer, I would call the physician and they would tell me what goal and then my anxiety would be gone because I used my resources by talking to them. They kind of asked me questions and they helped me get to the right answer. I hope I eased your anxiety about what to do when your patient passes out. This is my second Ramona. If you haven't seen my first Ramona video, please check that one out. She didn't make it. I do have a great video that you can watch that will help you assess your patient's fluid status and that's the end of the show. I appreciate all of you for subscribing. I love all of your questions and comments and I'll see you next time.